All right, we've got KP with us now and we'll get started with questions for him with Jesse. Hendrick, what did you consider when you were thinking about whether to come back? And what areas, now that you have come back, do you feel it's important to get better at this season? Um, well, you know, last year, I only got the chance to play in two and a half games. So just like not wanting my last year to end in like that because, you know, the concussion kept me out like the most of the year. And I tried to come back, but then re aggravated it again uh, in the end of the week. So just like that and just the guys, you know, just being around the team, getting another chance to actually work with Cody Witt where we have a full like some spring, summer, fall camp. Like he kind of like I kind of got me and Danny kind of got the chance to meet him a little bit earlier than everybody else since like we were kind of the seniors last year coming into this season. So we got a chance, but like we really didn't get a chance. Like we didn't have a spring ball last year. Some workouts were kind of funky where we're doing stuff and then we're told we're not having a season and then coming back. So just like all of that and like when my teammates, you know, just going out there just because I think this year could be really special offense and defense wise. And I think we could do a lot of good things. I may shock a lot of people this year. Oh, Jeff. Yeah, Kendrick, Alvis mentioned that too, that he told you guys he was coming back. He wanted to coach you and Danny for a full year. How did you get a good relationship with him in, in such a compressed period of time? Because it's it's not like this guy's been your position coach for three years or anything like that. Right. Um, you know, like I said, <clears throat> me and Danny got the chance to meet him a little bit. Like when he was getting interviewed, just kind of Coach Chris kind of called us up, like, you know, this may be like our new receiver coach before the interview. So just getting a chance to talk with him and then like, you know, me just doing some research on my own, just going back to looking at the guys he had at Colorado State, Michael Gallup, Rashad Higgins, and uh, I can't think of, I forgot the other part, but having him having three All-Americans there and then coming, then him going to the NFL coaching the Packers and then just him learning or coaching Devontae Adams and that the whole Packers receiver core. And just kind of learn, like, for us or for me personally, just, you know, me wanting to pick his brain just to see, like, what – he's coached guys where I'm trying to get All-American and a top top receivers in the NFL. And he's played receiver as well. So just learning from him or that that was kind of thing, just as we talking to him, just lit, how he was talking to us and just, like, the things he was saying, like, it caught my attention a lot and just – me wanting to learn from him, like what can I learn from him to help me improve my game so I can be ready to have a great season, good, great season this season, and then you know move on to the NFL next year and continue like doing good and that at that level. Colton, Kendrick, when you looked at last season, you mentioned you were held out a number of games, and then Danny obviously missed some as well. Just do you get a sense from the receiver room, especially maybe from you guys? Uh, just some hunger or the desire to kind of show last season wasn't who you guys are? Yeah, it's always – I think we always going to have that hunger or that that hunger mindset or, like, I call it, like, being a dog. Just – when then, like, just having that mindset, okay, like, hunger, you're going to outwork that person in front of you no matter what scouting reports say, like, something like – I know that I've always had or I've always been taught to have that dog mentality. Just and whenever you step on that, like kind of like Russell Westbrook is a great example. Off the field, he has a great off the off the court for Russell Westbrook. He has so many friends in the basketball world. But when it's like when he steps on that field, though, like or when he steps on that court, there is no friends. If you're not fighting on the same side as him. He's going out there every day, giving it 110 percent effort and he's trying to kill that person across from him and I think like just having that mindset this going into this year trying to make sure everyone has that mindset not even just the receiver group just the the team as a whole just having that us trying to have that dog mentality like when we step on this field there's no friends like you even your, your roommate might be a DV you might be roommates but when you step up when you step across the lines there are no friends you're trying to you should want to try to kill that person dominate that person every rep because that's only going to make you better and that's only going to make the person across from you better and that will make us better as a team. Steve. I'm just wondering if your receiving core is at full strength, you and Danny stay healthy, everybody stays healthy. And you have that full year of working with Graham. What's this passing 
attack kind of capable of delivering, do you think, this fall? I think we could get a lot done this year. You know, last year with being Graham's really first year, or he's getting that experience, you know, like me personally, I'm a guy, I need reps for me to learn things. Or I need to like go through some stuff. I need to mess up myself or do some things myself to see, you know, get the right look so I can know, okay, boom, how I can grow from that. Like, it's cool. You know, I mean, people like you might have, you might have to learn just looking at lines of paper and film because you may not get the opportunities other people get. But I know like since he got those, Graham got those opportunities last year, he's seen a lot of different coverage, different coverages, seeing how people play, seeing what teams do and what teams don't do. And just him having that experience last year and him building off that, I only think like the ceiling is so much higher for this offense. And once, like you said, once when we have everybody healthy, Graham got that year, you know, just all of us getting able to work together this spring, this summer, work on all that time and all that things. We really didn't have a chance to work on last year because of COVID. So I think this year, like the ceiling for us is very high. Jake? Kendrick, you mentioned reps. What are just one, one or two things that you're trying to incorporate into, you know, with, you know, to improve upon this spring, but also someone like AJ Abbott, what are you seeing from him this spring that maybe you haven't seen from other camps? Mm -hmm. um, just him taking that next step. Um, just him like doing the extra stuff, meeting with Coach Will, you know, going over plays, you know, asking me more questions, asking Danny more questions, asking Jack Dunn more questions. Just, you can just kind of tell like some of the steps that, that hunger mindset, he, that dog mentality, like he's trying to take, he's hungry. He's trying to take that next step, doing all the extra little stuff to, excuse me, find a way to find the opportunity to come out there and make plays, which he's shown he's done during, I was going to say fall camp, but he's shown during spring ball where he's showing out, he's going out there showing he's taking that culture and he's taking that extra time and it's showing out on the field where he's making plays. And that just gives him, that it helps build your confidence and it also helps Bill coach's confidence. Okay, boom. I see he's coming up here. Boom. I see he's trying to get better. Okay, now let's see. Work him in, you know, just work guys in and then just guys just taking advantage of that opportunity and having that everything go down to that. To me, like just having that dog mindset when you step on that field, just take everything that you've been doing, like all the extra hours you've been putting in to meet with coach and stuff, trying to get better and learn different things and pick his brain, just bring that to the field. And then for me, just being more of a leader, I'm just trying to, um, I know you can ask around, I'm not the most talkative like person. I'm more like the quiet, laid back, but me just trying to lead by example, but also being more vocal, you know, just helping guys out in front of, not behind the scenes. Like come on, I can always talk if they ask me one-on-one, -on -one, ask a question, I can help them. Just But just being more of that vocal leader. And then like, just kind of still working on my route running and just really route running and like, you know, just being more of a leader, kind of the things I'm trying to work on this off season and into next year. I got time for a couple more. We'll go back to Jesse. Hendrick, you mentioned AJ. It seems like the group as a whole might have some more options this year. Do you believe that to be true? And specifically with Devin and Chim Ray, are those a couple of guys that have stood out to you in the last couple of years since they've been here? Yeah, just them getting the chance to work with Coach Witt when they're younger. Um, since like as they're both freshmen, just get them getting that chance to work with someone like I said, who just, he just left the pack, just was with Devontae Adams. Devontae Adams just had a great season last year and even the year before that, like he's getting that pub to be one of like the top receivers in the league and just getting that coaching from a young age. And then just kind of with COVID, like last year, like a lot of like Tim and Devin got, Devin, more so Tim than Devin, but Devin got some time at the end of the year. But more so Tim just getting that experience last year with me and Danny being out and him having the opportunity to go out there and experience like, okay, this, even though it wasn't a regular season, like that's not how it, hopefully it won't be like that next year in this upcoming season, but just them getting that opportunity and them like you can see them taking steps from when they first got here during fall camp to the season to now, like some of them not making, same, making the same mistakes or adding different tools to their tool box, doing different stuff that they may not have understood why to do that last year, but since they've gotten a little bit of playing time and more, coaching or more time with coach Witt and like just understanding the offense that they're making plays and not so much thinking so much on like what to do or just understanding why you should do this and then okay maybe now that I saw this in the game I see why I probably should release this way or like whatever the case may be just them taking those next steps so I really do think like this receiver core could be could be good this year 
All right, we'll wrap things up for KP with one more from Jeff. Yeah, Kendrick, pretty much every one of your teammates we've talked to said they would just like to erase the 2020 season from their memory because of everything that went on. You got knocked out with the concussion and couldn't play. Can you share with us what it was like to have to sit on the sideline all those weeks and watch what was going on with the offense and not be able to help? Uh, just throughout my athletic career, since I started playing, I think that might have been the longest I've ever missed sitting out games, like not counting my moped accident a couple years ago. But besides that, like that's the first time I've ever really missed a whole season in any basketball or football. And it was just, for me, it was a different, it was just different, just knowing that I could be out there like making plays or me and Danny could be out there making plays, helping the offense just push through the weird year that we're having. Like with, with, with the year already being weird because of COVID, like not having, not having guys that practice every day or just, you know, cause contact tracing or people getting COVID it's just like, you never know what's gonna, that next day is gonna be like, you know, you come to practice, you may have the whole team, you may be down 30 guys. Like for some teams you may be down 30 guys and it's just like, just that whole experience and then just not being able to play is just like, it was fun. It was definitely frustrating, but for me, it was just trying to make sure I keep a positive attitude and help out the younger guys in any way that I could without actually being out there on the field, like any questions they have, like if you got some questions, ask me or about a look or about a certain play, like I, I can help you, even though I won't be out there physically to help, like out there helping the offense. But it was definitely frustrating, you know, just watching games like, it's different from like my freshman year when I registered it. Okay, boom. I knew kind of, okay, I wasn't playing that year, even though that was frustrating too, because, you know, that's kind of my first time, you know, not being able to really play or step on the field and perform. But it was a, for me, it was a great experience. You know, I took the time to get stronger, learn the playbook, but just like, but the COVID, the injury, like it was just very frustrating and different because not, the COVID, none of us, no one has experienced anything like that before. So for that, you really can't use that as an excuse because that was everyone was going through that same but just being not being able to go out there and make plays and help the guys out and I know like all the work we put in during the summer is just very frustrating and that goes back to why I decided to come back just not want to let, let my senior season be two two and a half games and like just have that cold like in the way the season was just not wanting to end on that note so just kind of wanting to come back like really like you somebody said he raced last year Forget about it. It happened in the past. And move on to this next year where hopefully supposedly we get the fans back this year. You know, I know they're gonna be happy about that. We're happy about that. And it's just getting everybody back out there and having like a normal or close to normal season as possible. All right. Thanks, KP. Appreciate your time. You're welcome. Second second nature. Swear. All right, we got Danny with us now, and we'll go ahead and get started with a question for him from Jeff. Yeah, Danny, we, we talked to KP about his decision to come back, and he told us a story that you and he met Coach Witted kind of during the hiring process, and he, you know, got to know him a little bit, and he said, hey, I want to come back, coach you guys for a full season, work with you, and KP said that meant a lot to him. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious if you can share your memories of that and, and what led your decision to come back here in 21. Yeah, um, I remember that for sure. That was when um, we were first starting to see who we wanted to get at, um, at the receivers coach. But um, it was mainly to do with just, you know, trying to get that extra full year with him. And, you know, he's been coaching a lot of places. You know, he coached with the Packers, Devontae Adams, a lot of guys there. So just to learn, like, a lot of things from him and, um, and take that in and so I can use that to my advantage. But also my reason for coming back is, you know, I didn't really want to end – um, how I did last year, unfortunately, like not being able to finish the season. So I just wanted to, you know, finish strong with my team and be able to uh, put together a full season and uh, basically just attack it with everybody. Go to Jesse. Danny, when you and Kendrick are healthy, what do you think you add to the wide receiver group and the offense in general? Um, just playmaking and dynamic playmaking and just being able to, you know, that seniority to, you know, we played in big games and we, you know, we, we won a lot of games. So just having that, that, um, you know, that senior, you know, ability to go out there and make those plays, you know, when we, when our, when our numbers called. 
And you mentioned not being able to finish the season how you wanted to. And we saw you before games warming up a few times, maybe it looked like we were getting closer. Can you just share maybe the process that you had to go through last year and maybe some of the emotions that you had to go through not being able to, to play with everything yeah. that was going on? Yeah, it was just – so I had a uh, had a concussion, and it was just tough for me because I just continued to have setbacks. And, um, you know, you can't really play with, with those. There's a lot of – I see there's a lot of CTE and a lot of things that – you know, you can get if you rush those back. So it was just me like having different setbacks and not wanting to rush it back and kind of like understanding how serious of an injury that is and, and not wanting to overdo that. So just had to do what's best for me and, you know, what's best for everybody just because, you know, I didn't want to, you know, further extend it and make it worse. Steve? Just wondering, like you and Kendrick both stay healthy and the receiving core stays healthy and you have a full year of working with Graham. Just what do you think this, the capabilities of this passing game are this fall? Oh, explosive, man. It's not even just me and Kendrick. You know, we got Jack, we got Chim, we got Asia Abbott, Devin Chandler. You know, we got a bunch of guys that's all coming together. And, you know, it's been fun for me. Um, just, you know, I know we all can make plays, but seeing them younger guys make those plays and practice and just competing is just, I just loved it so far. So it's been fun this spring to just see what everybody can do and, you know, how everybody can attack it. So uh, um, it's looking real good and we're continuing to get better. And this summer's going to be big for us to continue to work on our craft and get with Graham and the quarterbacks to, you know, get a, the timing down and just get closer with everybody. So I'm looking forward to it. Jake? Dan, what have you seen from, like you mentioned, you know, Chim Ray and AJ Abbott and Devin Chandler, just what are you seeing from them this spring in terms of steps they've taken compared to what you saw last season during that abbreviated season? Yeah, just you can see that they had like a, a year of, of football under their belt. You know, when you first come in, you got to get adjusted to the speed of the game and, you know, the, the playbook and stuff like that. So just them maturing a little bit and being able to, you know, um, um, the game slow down for them and them making them plays, the big time plays. So it's a, I see a lot of like myself and Kendrick in them, but you know, they're going to get to continue to grow and continue to get better. So they've been really good so far and we're just continuing to get better as a whole group. Back to Jesse. Annie, what are some of the small technical details you've worked on with Coach Whitted over the past year? And what specifically do you think you need to improve on this mm -hmm. season? Um, just being more consistent, um, being a consistent receiver. Um, also just releases, just a lot of technical, technical things within like our route, route running, like the front foot, keep your front, front foot straight, no fall steps. So just a lot of technical things for me, you know, just to detail it. So I'm crisp and clean and, you know, getting out of my breaks and just, you know, being a full, um, consistent receiver. Cool. Dane, when the receiver group struggled a little bit, I know with the health and everything last season, do you sense in meetings or when you guys are on the practice field right now that the group kind of wants to show that 2020 wasn't who you guys are and you guys can be better than that? Yeah, for sure. Um, we know that that was a tough year for us with just the whole COVID and injuries thing. You know, it just wasn't, you know, it wasn't working out for us as a, as a whole group. So, you know, we've got, we have that and we use that as an edge and as a fire for us to, you know, we want to be better and we will be better. So, yeah, we for sure use that as fuel. All right, we'll wrap things up for Danny with one more from Jeff. Hey, Danny, you guys know it's a business and, and coaches come and go, including position coaches. But I'm just curious, how, how long did it take you and, and KP, the seniors, to tr enable a trust coach witted that working under him was the right call for both you guys? It's not like you had a lot of time to work with him, no yeah. spring ball. Man, I just honestly, I just um, gave it to God, man. I just had that faith in Coach Witt. And um, when I first met him, I could tell, like, that was somebody that I, you know, I could trust and that was genuinely a good person. So, you know, I love to do and I, I can't wait to keep learning from him. So really, as soon as I met him, I knew that, you know, that was a guy that I want to learn from and that, you know, he could take me to the next level with, like, some of the stuff he knew. All right. Thanks, Danny. Yes, sir. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay, Jack has joined us and we will start with questions for him with Jesse. Jack, how much better do you expect this wide receiver group to be not only with Danny and Kendrick coming back, but with what you've seen from some of the younger wide receivers this spring? Yeah, I mean, I expect us to take um, some pretty meaningful steps forward. Um, 
I think obviously we have a lot of returning talent, guys who have a lot of experience playing in the past. Um, but also with that younger group, um, there's a lot of guys who are starting to kind of pick up on things, you know, learn the offense, um, take coaching and, you know, kind of run with it. So that's been really positive to see those guys start to kind of develop and come along. So I think that adds some depth to the room in addition to the you know, prior experience that we have. Colton? Jack, last year you guys get coach witted, then, you know, COVID happens and everything kind of shuts down. Where have you seen him be able to kind of dive in a little bit more into more detail uh, with things now that you guys have some time to practice and you're not trying to just prep for a game and get ready for a game? Yeah, I mean, I think from really day one when Coach Witt came along, um, you know, he was always, um, you know, trying to get in depth with stuff and, you know, help us really understand, you know, what we're doing and why we're doing it. Um, you know, even, you know, last year at this time when we were all, um, you know, in our separate places in quarantine, you know, we were on Zoom meetings and he was, you know, even as he was still learning the offense, um, was breaking things down for us and, um, you know, trying to trying to teach us as much as he could. And I think now that, you know, he's got a full year um, being here and, you know, understands things um, the way that he does, I think it's really the technique aspect of it. You know, he's able to, you know, every day having a spring ball, spring is, you know, when you can spend a lot of time focusing on, you know, how to improve your technique um, and, you know, just focusing on your game that way. So I think he's been able to bring a lot to the table in that respect and, and teach us some, some new things that we hadn't learned in the past. Jeff? Jack, I know a lot of people are focusing on, on Kendrick and Danny coming back and, and the young guys, but you got a chance to expand your role last year and contribute to the offense. Just from, a, from an individual perspective, what do you hope that your role will be this year? And what do you think you can contribute again this year? Yeah, I mean, I, I hope my role is, um, you know, whatever helps us win the most games. That's really the only thing that um, matters in my mind. Um, I think, you know, obviously I have a lot of experience I can draw on um, that I think I can bring to the table, um, you know, whether that's helping young guys learn stuff faster um, or obviously, you know, putting that experience to play on the field. Um, you know, I think that that's, um, you know, something you can't really um, find a replacement for is just having those game experiences and, you know, kind of been through the battles before. Um, so I think that that's positive that, you know, all the way around our room, we have a lot of guys who have that. Um, but in terms of my role, um, you know, I'm not going to say there's some specific, um, you know, target for any sort of statistical category that I really care about. The only thing that matters to me is how many W's that we get at the end of the day. Jake. Jack, remember when you talked to us, I think it was in December, you said you were leaning towards coming back, but you hadn't made a decision yet. When did you realize that you, you know, were going to hundred percent wanting to come back and just, what did you learn about yourself last season being thrusted into a, a bigger role? Yeah, I think um, probably a couple of weeks after the season ended, I knew for sure that I wanted to come back. Um, just taking that time off and thinking about, um, you know, what the next year would mean if I didn't, you know, exhaust my full eligibility. I felt like, um, you know, I had another chance to come back and play with my teammates and my friends. And, you know, I felt like I would be selling myself short and kind of letting those guys down if I didn't take it. So, um, you know, I was just excited to, you know, have another year to play football. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that was an opportunity I wasn't going to pass up once I had kind of come around on that decision. Um, in terms of what I learned about myself last year, I don't think, I mean, I don't think there's anything new necessarily that I learned about myself. Um, you know, obviously I had more playing time, but I, I felt like I did all the things that I knew I could do um, throughout my whole career here. Um, I felt like it was really more just the opportunity to, to prove it on the field um, in a greater capacity. Back to Colton. Jack, I want to ask you about uh, special teams and your role as a punt returner. We've seen last season and here in spring ball, you guys using two punt returners. What do you think that can kind of do uh, to that unit and kind of uh, what challenges do you think that presents uh, to a defense or to a punting team? 
Yeah, so a lot of that kind of just depends on, um, you know, what type of uh, punt unit we're going up against. We've got a lot of guys, you know, in our conference and non-conference opponents we play that obviously do a lot of rugby style punts. So when you put two returners back there, um, it makes a lot more difficult for them to just spray it around the field and get that e extra roll um, from it landing on the ground. So I think by putting two guys back there, it kind of minimizes their ability to do that. Um, you know, you can save a lot of hidden, hidden yardage just by staying in front of the ball or, you know, catching it, getting a fair catch and keeping it from rolling, especially against teams like that. So I think that gives us a little bit of flexibility, you know, practicing that more so that as we go into the season um, and we go against teams that do that type of thing, you know, we have the practice experience to draw on. All right. Thanks, Jack. Appreciate your time. All right. Jim has joined us now and we will go ahead and get started with questions for him with Jesse. Jim Ray, after the season, when you went back and looked at the cutups of you from your first year here, were you satisfied with how you performed and what did you feel like you needed to improve on to make an even bigger impact this year? Uh, I think uh, my first year, uh, I think you can never be satisfied with how you did the year before. Um, I think I did some good things, but I think the biggest thing I want to work on was just be more consistent and continue to grow, um, you know, as a freshman coming in and being able to have all the experiences I did, I think it can really help me in my future, but at the same time, you got to learn from those experiences and, that's what I've been, I've been trying to do in the spring is just continue to work on like the things that I saw on tape that I need to improve on and work on and just continue to become a better receiver overall. So, Jeff? Yeah, Jim, anytime experienced guys like like Pryor and, and, and Davis go down, it allows young guys to step up and they always say it's, it's good in the long run. But when you go through it, that first time and you're and you're maybe not prepared for it it can be hell was it difficult at times last year for you young guys to have to carry the load and and what did you learn from that that toughened you up oh uh, I think it was uh sometimes difficult especially when you're you know not having the results you want um that can be something that's difficult but you know we have a next guy up mentality so I was just in there trying to execute my job uh, obviously things didn't always go as planned. Um, I think I did some good things. I think I definitely had some things I can improve on, but, uh, going into my second year, uh, I was in those situations. I was in those, uh, played a, a top 10 team on the road, uh, you know, in the fourth quarter of close games. So, uh, just taking those experiences that I've had and moving forward with them along with, you know, having experiences, experience guys back, I think, uh, something that will actually help me in the long run. So Jake. So, Jim Ray, we've seen you, especially on Saturday, catch a lot, a lot of passes from Graham and Chase. How's the communication been, you know, in your second year whirling and working with the quarterbacks? How have you grown with, with that unit in terms of communication? Yeah, uh, you know, I'm really close with Graham and uh, Chase, and I feel like that from year one to year two, our connections just continue to grow. You know, we didn't even we truly have an off season last year, so uh, being able to get reps with them, you know, obviously they're we have an extremely talented QB room, but uh, being able to get more reps with them, them kind of knowing what I'm thinking and then having that close relationship where we can, you know, share what we're thinking and share our thoughts. Uh, I think that's something that's big. And I think that our connection is becoming way more consistent and uh, we're getting on the same page a lot. So it's been really fun. Colton. Jim, what's your relationship or what's the dynamic between you and coach Witted and what's it like working with him? We were talking with Danny and KP earlier about how, you know, detailed he is and how close he, he gets with you guys. Yeah. Uh, Coach Witt loves the game and he cares about his players. And I think those are probably two of the most important things that you can have as a, a coach. Um, you know, I, re I really appreciate the things he does. And I'm, I know he's been there before he's played at the NFL level. He's coached the NFL level. He's coached guys in college that have made it to the NFL, um, all Americans, all that. So I really try to just listen to every single thing he says and, um, yeah, he's been great. Uh, I'm, I'm very fortunate to have a coach like that. And I'm looking forward to keep working with them and keep improving with them. Thank you, Jesse. Jim Ray, you didn't necessarily get a ton of in-game reps with Danny and Kendrick last season because they were hurt. What do you think they add to the offense when, when everybody's healthy? And what specific things do you think you've learned from watching them or asking them questions? Yeah, I mean, those guys have been great. Um, anytime I have a question, uh, they've been there uh, ever since my freshman year. Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to playing with those guys next season more, hopefully. And, uh, yeah, I think that, 
Uh, the thing I learned from Kendrick, the biggest thing is, you know, when he gets the ball in his hand, he's he's a playmaker. He's always trying to make a big play, you know, and I think that's important as a receiver. Anytime he touches the ball, try to score. And then Danny, um, his catch radius is what really impresses me with him. Um, so, you know, he, he makes me want to go out and make every single catch go, you know, make those one-hand catches just like, just like he does. So, yeah, but those guys have been great. Any question I have, whether it's route running or, you know, off the field stuff, they've been, they've been there to answer it. And uh, I think our relationship has even grown more going into this year um, than it even had it was last year. So. Back to Colton. Where do you think uh, Devin Chandler has grown the most? We've seen him make some plays last season and show some things here in spring practices that seems like he's a pretty explosive guy. Yeah, Devin's, uh, I feel like Devin's really improved um, coming into the spring. And I think he's just played with more confidence, um, understood the game more. Uh, you know, I think that just comes with the reps. He's a guy who's, I think, going to be really big for us. Um, so, you know, as long as he keeps working and keeps on doing what he's doing, I think uh, he's on the right path. And I'm looking forward to playing with him. Uh, you know, he's in my class. So I'm looking forward to doing big things alongside him. All right, we'll wrap things up for Jim with one more from Jeff. Yeah, we, we talked to a couple of your teammates who said they just, if they could, they'd like to wipe the 2020 season off the map because of all the struggles you guys went through with, with COVID and everything. Are there parts of it that you hold on to, the experiences you gain, but also parts that you just hope you never have to deal with again, ever? Uh, I think you can't dwell on the past, but I think it's you'd be foolish if you didn't learn from it. Um, you know, there was valuable experiences that we gained as a team and as individuals last year. So although we can't, you know, hang on to that and that's those experiences aren't going to impact what we do in 2021, uh, I still think that us going forward, uh, being able to look at those experiences and become better players from that is important. Uh, so, you know, I definitely don't, don't dwell on, uh, you know, what happened in the past, you can't change it, but at the same time, it's definitely impacted who I am today and who I am going to be moving forward. All right. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate your time. Thank you, guys.